Close your eyes and watch your breath. Where do you feel the breathing right now? Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Let your attention settle on the spot where the breath is most prominent, where it's easiest to see. And then ask yourself if it's comfortable. If you're not sure, you can try other kinds of breathing, longer or shorter, heavier, lighter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. Try to find what feels really good at the spot where you're focused. Then we've got something good, you let it spread. If you clamp down on the breath, it's going to be uncomfortable and the mind is going to want to get away. But if you allow comfortable sensations to spread through the body, it becomes more and more pleasant to be right here. And then the temptation to go wandering off someplace else gets less. So focus right here. Make this a good place to stay. In the Pali, they talk about this as being your home, the place where the mind tends to stay. So you want to make the breath its default position, instead of landing on lust, or landing on greed, landing on anger. You want to land on the breath. It's the place where the mind likes to stay, where it tends to stay, where it feels at home. That way, as you go through life, you're coming from a position of strength. You realize that you have things to share, because you've got a sense of well-being right here. You're not so hungry all the time for other people's approval, for other people's whatever. You've got something good right here. And when you've got something good, then you think about sharing it. This is called the treasure of generosity. Sometimes you hear that spiritual materialism is bad. But it's better to be spiritually rich than spiritually poor. And generosity is one of the forms of spiritual wealth. The fact that you realize you have more than enough of something and you can share it. It can be a material thing, or it can be your knowledge, it can be your time, it can be your energy, it can be your forgiveness. You learn how to give these things and the state of the mind gets larger. It becomes a much more pleasant place to stay, your mind. It's not constantly worried about having to get this, having to get that, feeling hungry here, hungry there, lacking this, lacking that. If you go through life with a sense of lack, you're constantly feeding on things outside, and who knows what outside is going to have to offer you. Sometimes it has good things, sometimes it has some pretty bad things. It's like feeding the body. When the body's really hungry, it's just going to go after anything. Good or bad, it doesn't really con concern itself. All it wants is something to fill itself up. And the same with the mind, when it has a sense of lack inside. It'll take anything. Look for happiness anywhere. So give it something good inside. You realize you have enough to share. That opens up the mind, makes it a much more pleasant place to be. And it is a genuine form of wealth. The Buddha never said anything, never said that spiritual materialism is bad. He actually talked about different treasures of the mind. And the image being that you invest your time where it's wisest to develop the qualities that will be really useful. Because wherever you go, you need treasures to depend on. You live in this life, you need treasures, you live in, go on to the next life. You can't take your material things with you, but you can take the good qualities of the mind. And even as you're just moving around here, there are a lot of things you can't take with you from one place to another, but you can take the goodness of your mind. So you try to develop that as your wealth. So when you're able to be generous, it's a sign of real wealth inside, real well-being inside. We begin with the breath, think of ourselves as like grounding. And then we look around, see what areas we can be helpful in. Now we, we derive the goodness out of things. And John Lee has an image. He says, things have their goodness. But only if you squeeze the goodness out, like squeezing the juice out of a fruit, do you really get to benefit from it. In the same way, you, when you give something away, you give your time or whatever. What gets given away is the rind of the fruit. What you keep is the juice. And so let that juice keep you nourished. <laughs>